Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus this morning. We're here to exalt the name of the Lord. We're here to welcome the presence of God into our service this morning. We're here to glorify and lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Glory, 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 hallelujah. We're here to magnify the name of the Lord. Won't you help me lift up the name of Jesus in this place this morning? As we go before the throne of grace, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to glorify him. Most righteous and heavenly Father, most mighty and majestic Lord. Father God, we give you all the praise this morning. Father God, we magnify you. We bless your name, for you are great and greatly to be praised. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to come before your throne of grace. We're grateful, Lord God, that you've given us another chance, Lord God, to come into your house of worship. Father God, we are grateful, Lord God, for this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we're asking you, Lord God, to sweep through the sanctuary this morning. Sweep through this place, Lord God, with your power. Father God, wash us afresh, Lord God, in your presence. Release your power upon your people this morning as we exalt your name, as we lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Father God, we're grateful, Lord God, for the obedience, Lord God, that sent our Savior, Lord God, to the cross. Father, we're grateful, Lord God, that by his stripes we are healed this morning. So we bless the name of Jesus. There is no other name. There is no name above that name. There is no other name but the name of Jesus by which we can be saved. So we give the glory to the name of the Lord this morning. We magnify name of the Lord this morning. It's all about Jesus this morning. We are here for encounter, Lord God, with our Lord and our Savior, Lord God. Our minds are set on Jesus this morning, that he would have his way in this place, that he would have his way in this place, and we would lift up his name. We would bless his name, but with the blessings go up, the blesser comes down. And Father God, we desire to abide in your presence this morning for in the presence of the lord there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore father god we desire to bask in the fullness of christ this morning the fullness of christ this morning the fullness of joy the fullness of peace the place lord god where we can receive lord god healing lord god for the body healing lord god for the mind healing lord god for the soul Fill us up this morning. Fill us with your presence this morning. Fill us up, Lord God, till there is no more room, Lord Jesus. We desire, Lord God, to be filled in your presence this morning. We are grateful, Lord God, for all that you've done for us and all that you continue to do. So we invite you into this place, Lord God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Jesus, our Lord, Jesus, our Savior, Jesus, our shield, Jesus, our buckler, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's why we're here this morning, to lift up his name. Help me to glorify our God, the one that set us free, the one that shed his blood, the one that broke his body, that every area of our lives that was once broken can now be healed. Jesus, 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 that's why we're here, we're here to lift up his name, welcome into this place, Lord God, have full reign in this place, Lord God, intervene and interject in our lives, Lord God, we're asking you to disrupt this service and do as you please, in this place, Lord God, rest upon us, Lord God, anoint the man servant and the maid servant for this hour, Lord God, anoint the psalmist, Lord God, and the musicians. Announce, anoint every servant leader in their respective places. Let us walk out with miracles today. Let us walk out, Lord God, with healing today. Let us walk out with refreshing today. In the name of Jesus, Father, have your way. Have your way in this place. We won't cease to give you the honor. We will not cease to give you the praise. For you are worthy of all the glory, Lord God. You are worthy 
above the glory, Lord God. And we will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're here to rejoice and be glad in it. Is anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Good morning, kingdom. Good morning, kingdom. I am excited to be in the house of the Lord. We serve an awesome God, a mighty God, a magnificent God. Does anybody else believe that? Oh, come on. Do you know the God that you serve? Do you know that he's awesome? Do you know that he's mighty? Do you know that he's awesome? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I serve an awesome God. I serve an awesome God. I serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kingdom, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We're going to sing a real familiar song. Come on, wherever you are, let's just worship him together like this. We serve an awesome God. He's mighty. He's magnificent. Yeah. Come on, right here. Lord, you are awesome. Yeah. Lord, you are awesome. Come on, let's lift it. Sing, Lord.
keeps on making waves time and time again, even when we don't deserve it, even when we aren't worth it. He looks beyond our faults. Yes, Lord. He's such a good God. He is such a good God. Is anybody grateful that the hand of the Lord is still on you? Oh, come on. Is anybody else grateful that the hand of the Lord is still on you? Come on, he won't let go of you. Even when you decide to let go, he won't. He won't. He won't let go of you. Even when your friends let you go, even when your friends drop you, even when your friends turn their back on you, your family members turn their back on you, how many know that the Lord is still there and he'll always be there? Come on, wherever you are, let's just worship him. God, we love you. We adore you. God, we thank you for never, le never letting go of us. Even when we decided to let you go, God, you didn't let us go. Even when we decided to run away, God, you chased after us. You've been there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, we're so grateful that you didn't let go of us. Even in our mess, even in our sin, you decided to continue to hold on to us. Yes, Lord. Oh. hearts cry this morning is you won't let go of me never let go of me you won't let go of me you won't let go never let go you won't let go of me come on kingdom get that in your spirit never let go of me yes lord you won't let go of me you won't let go never let go sing you won't let go of me sing you won't let go of me you won't let go of me sing you won't let never let go sing you won't let go of me come on get that in your spirit sing you won't let go
You won't let go of me. You won't let go. Come on, let's lift it. Sing, you won't let go of me. Come on, kingdom of one voice. You won't let go. You won't let go. Come on, with one voice. You won't let, never let go. You won't let go of me. Come on, if you truly believe it, you won't let go. Only if you truly believe it, you won't let go. Sing, you won't let, never let go. Sing, you will take care of me. When I needed you most, you were there. You will take care of me. Yes, Lord. Sing, you will take Always take, sing, you will take care, you will take care, sing, you will take care, sing, you will take, always, sing, you won't let go of me, even when I let you go, you won't let go, you won't let go. You won't let go, never let go. Sing, you won't let go of me. Come on, with a loud voice. Sing, you won't let go. Sing, you won't let go. Come on, one more time. Sing, you won't let, never let go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, how many know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be? If he let you go, where would you be? If he turned his back on you, where would you be? But you're still here, you're still standing. You won't let go. You won't let go. Yes, Lord, you keep your hand on me. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You keep your hand on me. You keep your hand on me. You keep your hand on me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You keep your hand on me. You keep your hand on me. Woo. The presence of the Lord is here. Right now in this moment, whatever you need from him, he's here, 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 he's here to lift every burden, he's here to mend every broken heart, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here to heal your body, he's here. Yes, Lord, 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 yes, Lord. Said you keep your hand on me. Oh, said you keep your hand on me. We need you, 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 we need you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come and move. Come and heal. Come and save. We move ourselves out the way so that you can have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Come and have your way. 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 Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way. We need you, we need you. We need you, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you. Come and see about us, Lord. 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 Come on, don't leave the same way you came. Don't leave the same way you came. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Whatever you need, it's in this atmosphere. Whatever you need, it's in the atmosphere. He's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. He's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. Come on, open up yourself. Open up yourself, open up your heart to receive, open up your mind to receive. He's here, he's here. Yes, Lord, 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 y
Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, this is how you change atmospheres. Come on, this is how you change atmospheres. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. There's healing in this room. There's freedom in this room. There's deliverance in this room. Whatever you need is in the room. Whatever you need is in the room. to God. Bless the name of the Lord this morning. The presence of the Lord God is here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is upon us. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord God this morning. His presence is here. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. We glorify God this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. There is none other like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless his holy name this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We thank you this morning. We thank you for your divine and heavenly visitation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And if you can, put your hands together and give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. For he is a great God. He is a loving Father. And he came to meet every need this morning. Whatever need you have, give it to God this morning, for he is here. He is here. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give the Lord the fruit of our lips this morning. We worship him with the content of our heart this morning. Glory to Jesus. And now we worship God in partaking in Holy Communion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're partaking in Holy Communion this morning, as you enter the sanctuary, the Holy Sacraments in a small baggie, you did not receive if you did not receive it and you would like to partake in Holy Communion, please raise your hand. Our ushers will serve you. And for those who are watching online, this is the time for you to prepare your Holy Sacraments for Communion service. As our ushers are moving around the sanctuary, lift your hands if you would like to partake in Holy Communion. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our Lord and Saint Jesus Christ himself instituted this supper to remind us of his service, to remind us of his sacrifice, and to remind us of his suffering until death on the cross. Christ's sacrifice on Calvary brings us our salvation. It brings us reconciliation to God, and it brings us healing for our soul. The Bible says in Romans 5, verse 6 through 10, that when we were still without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. First Peter 3 and 18 reads, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, the just for the unjust, the innocent for the guilty, so that he might bring us to God. Isaiah 53 and 5 tells us that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are made whole. We are healed. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 32, cautious us not to eat this bread or drink of this cup, of the Lord in an unworthy manner as we will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For 
this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. So kingdom, let us take a moment and examine ourselves. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all sin. If there is anything in me that's not like you, take it out now. Purge me, wash me, so that I may be whiter than snow. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, you may eat. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, this is the cup in, of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, you may drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we thank the Lord for his sacrifice his broken body and the shedding of his blood for our salvation, our reconciliation, and our healing. And we receive that today, amen. When you finished receiving the body and blood of our Lord, we ask that you place the container in the baggie and the ushers will collect them from you, amen. Let's put our hands together one more time for our Lord and our Savior, his sacrifice. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. What a great and mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Do we have any first time visitors? We'd like to welcome you. If, this, if you are visiting this, our church for the first time, we ask that you would please remain standing so that we may greet you. We don't want to embarrass you, but we want to show you some love. Amen. Glory to God. Let us welcome our guests. Let us show them the love of Christ this morning. And as we're greeting our guests, let us greet one another. Amen.
to be here. Hallelujah. We're here to work. welcome everyone, those who are watching online, those who are here in the sanctuary. Welcome to Kingdom Builders Worship Center. Glory to God. We worship God with the fruit of our lips. We worship God in partaking in holy communion, but we also worship God with the fruit of our increase. Hallelujah. Um, I, as you were singing, Taylor, you mentioned something about obedience and um, the Bible says that Christ was obedient even unto the point of death on the cross. And through his obedience, do you know that through obedience, we can unlock some doors, right? Through his obedience, God opened the door to our divine destiny. He grafted us in into the body of Christ, into the house of the Lord, into the family of God through Christ's obedience. So how much more our obedient, right? How much more can we open the door to our obedience? The Bible says in John 14 and 15, if you love me, obey my commands or do my commandments. Amen. The Bible also says in John, 1 John 15 and 3, this is the love of God, that you obey what I command. Obedience is so vital to what God has for us. We unlock doors when we are obedient. Our obedience show that we love God. Our obedience says that, God, I trust you to do whatever you said you would do. So today we're asking everyone who's ready to give to not only be a cheerful giver, but an obedient giver, amen? Because that will open the door to your divine destiny. That will open the door to the promises of God over your life. So if you're ready to give, I ask that you would please stand. And we have several ways to give this morning. If you are in the sanctuary and you'd like to give physically, the ushers are going around, they have envelopes. If you need one, please raise your hand. Our ushers will serve you. If you would like to give electronically or you're watching online, we have several ways to give electronically. You can give via Givelify under Kingdom Builders Worship Center or through Cash App at dollar sign K Builders Church. If you are ready to give, please stand if you can. Please stand so that we can say our given declaration together. Amen. Please repeat after me. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I come. I am blessed when I go. I'm the head and not the tail. Above only, never beneath. I'm a lender, never a borrower. Increase and overflow has come to my house. In Jesus' name, amen. You are now in the hands of our ushers.
we can stand all over this building as we prepare to pray over the seed that has been sown. God, we thank you for the seed that has been sown. We thank you for those who had to give and those who didn't have to give. God, we pray that you will bless some of us 30, some of us 60, but most of us 100 fold. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Kingdom, we're getting ready to go higher in this worship experience. But before we receive the word of God, we just want to worship God one more time together. The presence of the Lord is here. I don't know about you, but I feel much better. I feel much better than the way I came in. He came and moved and touched, and he's still here. Come on, how many know that God is able to do things that we couldn't even imagine? He's able. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, he's able. Come on, look at your other neighbor and say, God is able. He's able. Come on, does anybody truly believe that he's able to do? Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. simple it says God is able to do just what he said he would do come on kingdom I know you know it he's gonna fulfill every promise to you so don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you he's able come on kingdom if you believe that he's able Come on, help us lift it right here. Come on, right here. See, he's able. He's able. Oh, come on, let's go back to the top. Don't give up on God. Why? Because he 
today he won't give up on you so don't give up on him yes. hallelujah 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 let's give the praise and worship teams a salute on this morning hallelujah hallelujah they were actually all over my message for the day that just lets me know that God has everything in line. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. On behalf of Bishop, the shepherd of this house, Robert C. Perry II, hallelujah. We pray for him, we continue to cover him in his absence and in his presence, hallelujah. Cover him, Lord, from his head down to his feet. God, hallelujah, hallelujah. I won't be before you long on today. Hallelujah. But there's a word. There's a word. There's a word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can actually be seated. But I still want you to open your word and be attentive to what the word said. Don't get too relaxed because you're seated. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All right, all right. Today we are still talking about flourishing, <laughs> but there's two types of flourishing. There's flourishing in the world, and there's flourishing in Christ. Which one y'all think I'm talking about? <laughs> all right, all right. We got some believers in the house. Yes. We will be coming from, well, our sermonic scripture is coming from Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to go down to verse 10 through 15. Luke, chapter 9, 1 and 2, and then we're jumping down to verse 10 to 15. After you have that, put your marker there, and then you will turn your Bible to Genesis 3, verse 6 and 7. But we're going to start with Luke. But put Genesis 3, verses 6 and 7 on your mark. 
Halleluja, halleluja. Luke 9, 1 and 2. When Jesus had called the twelve to, together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and cure diseases. And he sent them. Someone say he sent them. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and he heal and to heal the sick. Go to verse 10. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging. Because we are in a remote place. Jesus replied, you give them something to eat. They answered, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Unless we go buy food for all the crowd, it was about 5,000 men counted, but it must have been about 15,000 people there because they didn't count the women and children. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. The disciples did so, and everybody sat down, taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to set before the people. They all ate. Everyone say, they all ate. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were leftovers. And the Lord add a blessing to that reading of his word. Often when we talk about this familiar scripture, we celebrate and we give the attention to the two fish and five loaves being fed to a multitude of people. So we often look at the multitude and their blessing. But for the sake of today's message, I would like for you to consider that the multitude were the blessers of the disciples. We're talking about flourishing in Christ. I want to speak about the flourishing of Christ because it's different from in the world. In God, you can flourish, and it's nothing to do with your financial status, your education, nor your IQ level. Flourishing is yours under the guidelines of you just being a believer. So you see in the world how some of these artists you got to be a certain size and you got to have this. I don't care how great you are, they found something wrong in it. Beyonce is catching it right now for her country album. You don't have to worry about that in Christ. Not only will you flourish, no matter what size you are, what color you are, your education level, but you will flourish because you're a believer. So here's just a few guidelines. Flourishing doesn't just happen. So here's a few guidelines for flourishing in Christ. The praise and worship team has already helped me with this first point. And often, it happens here at Kingdom more often than not. In order 
for you to flourish in Christ, your environment must be favorable for flourishing. We must be careful. And you know, I'm sorry. I want you to turn to Genesis real quick. Genesis 3, 6 and 9, so that we will have a reference for my first point. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for good, for food, and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some of her husband, some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. That's vital to my first point. We must be careful, because just like Adam and Eve, they were in a place, in an environment to flourish. An environment that was favored by God and created by God. They were supposed to flourish. But now, because of their disobedience, that favorable environment became a place of shame. In my studying, I realized that Adam and Eve, especially Eve, I know there's always an argument. I know there's always an argument. That's, that's another subject. But seriously, they both shared in the fall and the failure. They both created curses that still exist today. But again, that's for another time. They were in a favorable environment, but they allowed the serpent to change their perspective on their environment. The garden never changed. They were still in the garden. When the serpent came and Eve bit the fruit, after eating the forbidden fruit, they were awakened to something that they never should have ever been exposed to in the garden. In our own lives, there are areas that are supposed to be favorable, but then trauma comes. And the same area that was designed to prosper you and help you grow has now brought about shame, hurt, and pain. How do you flourish in an unfavorable environment? I want to flourish in my marriage. I want to flourish in my ministry. I want to flourish in school. But there's, there, there's this thing, this disappointment of my spouse messing up. This thing of lack of finances. There's this thing of church hurt that turned my favorable environment into an unfavorable environment. And now it hinders my growth. We jump and shout when Bishop says, this is our time to flourish, and we should. One of the things I love about being a member of Kingdom Builders is that Bishop and the leaders, the praise and worship team, the musicians, they always set the atmosphere that's welcoming for God's presence. We know that God shows up. Yes, give God some praise on that. He shows up at Kingdom. We know that God shows up at Kingdom and God's presence shifts the atmosphere when he gets here. This would be just another room unless his glory falls. We all walk in carrying our own environment. But when we come into this room and we are on one accord concerning what, needs to, what it needs to look like, that's when the devil gets upset because he knows where two or three are gathered in like minds as unto God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Even if you don't know it, even if you don't believe it, the enemy does, and he knows that he's defeated and he must flee. So now, this favorable environment goes home with us. This favorable environment goes to the bank with us. It goes to the doctor's office with us. When God shifts the environment, 
flourishing in favor takes over. Our environment in kingdom prepares us for those unfavorable environments. It's at that time when you can remind yourself of your kingdom experience and what God spoke over your life. As a believer, favorable means God's favor is able. I'll say it again. God's favor is able. It's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that you could ever ask or think. Tell your neighbor, this kingdom environment is going to help me live. In spite of what it looks like and what you've gone through, you have to believe that you can flourish in Christ. If you're going to flourish in Christ, you have to forgive the people or the person and sometimes yourself who ruin your environment. That person who cut you short from flourishing, you must forgive them. As long as you hold them hostage, you hinder your growth. You see, holding them hostage means that you have to stay down on their level. God is trying to flourish you. He's trying to take you to another level. That can't happen if you're spending time trying to hold your enemies down. Forgive them. Allow God to put the pieces back together and trust in him. Nothing that you have done, nothing others have done, can cancel the promises that God has for your life. Jeremiah 29 reminds us of God's plans to prosper you and bring you to an expected end. You're still in the garden. Your environment is favorable because God's favor is able. You just have to change your perspective of your environment. If you're going to flourish in Christ, for those taking notes, my point number two, if you're going to flourish in Christ, you must understand that you have an assignment. If you're a corporate person in a boardroom and you're a believer, you're in ministry. That mother of small children who stays at home to nurture and teach the kids schooling and Bible verses and how to pray and give thanks for that lunch or dinner that she's prepared. That's ministry. Come on, mothers. High school or college student, you're the one standing for right when your teacher or professor says that this is what's right. But you say no if it doesn't line up with the word of God. You're a light on that campus. You're in ministry. We all, as believers in Christ, have an assignment, just like the disciples. One day, we will have to give an account for that. Here's the thing. We don't know when that time is. The young keep saying, when I get older. But I recall having a co-worker who was 32 at the time. He told me that his father and his grandfather died in their early 40s. So by that testimony, he was already pretty old. But if you're 50 and you're going to live to see 90 or 100, then you're still pretty young. Stop basing it on your birth date. It's based on your death date. And we don't know when that is. You might want to begin walking in your assignment ASAP. Bishop spoke earlier of people waking up to do nothing. I call that existing, not living. When you operate in your assignment, you don't wake up waiting to see what your day will bring. You wake up. 
to make something happen in your day. When Jesus returns, I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Trust me, God will not be interested in how many IG and Facebook followers you have. He will only ask, did you know his son? And he will then review your walk in your assignment. The disciples had an assignment to feed the multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread. Today, for the sake of the point, we're not going to focus on the multitude. We're going to focus on the disciples. We are talking about flourishing by assignment. The 12 disciples, those that walked and talked with Jesus, those who had witnessed him perform miracles, those that had communion with him, those disciples who would press their way to 301 Columbia Road on a Sunday morning, those prayerfully prepared on this morning to participate in the service by way of our cyber sanctuary. Yes, you are the disciples. You will have to give an account one day. So now the disciples at this time have been called by Jesus. They were having conversation and Jesus was entrusting them with power and authority. Then he sent them out. What I like about the synoptic gospels, is, which are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they tell similar stories, but in them, we are able to get more layers of the stories. It's almost like getting an extra slice of my wife's awesome pound cake. <laughs> the disciples are now being accountable. I figured if they're being accountable, then that must mean that there are some ingredients for us to follow to assure we produce effective ministry. So I wrote down a few. Luke 9 and 1 says, he called them. His calling supersedes what and how you as a disciple think about what and how your assignment should be carried out. The disciples laid down what they were going to do because they heard Jesus call. There's a saying, if you want to make God laugh, tell him about your plans. Tell your neighbor, forget about your plans. <laughs> Before he called them, he predestined them. God already knew what you would be up against in your assignment. So at the same time, he was calling you, he was equipping you with the supernatural powers to pull it off. So for those of you who keep saying, I don't have enough money for it. I don't have the education for it. I'm too old, I'm too young. Whatever your excuse is that keeps you running away from your assignment, you just have to trust God. Know that he only equips those that say yes to his will and to his way. Could it be that you are not flourishing because you haven't said yes? He sent them. You must resist the urge to send yourself. The enemy loves when you act on your own. He loves when you feel that you're a bag of chips and all of that without God. Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells you to lean not to your own understanding. Be careful not to rush the process. In doing so, you could abort what God is trying to accomplish in your life. It's not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of God that you will be equipped to flourish. Those were just a few ingredients, not my main points, but some things to take note of.
But note takers, point number three. If you're going to flourish in Christ, you must not grow weary. Galatians 6 and 9, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The disciples were sent, and they returned to him to give an account, and they were very tired. They had given all they had. I know. There's some of you in the sanctuary and online, and you're saying, Deacon Tony, I haven't been perfect, but I've given all I have. I'm trying to hold on to my marriage. I'm trying to deal with these knucklehead kids and their issues. I'm tired of people who keep saying, I'm praying for you, but they don't lift a finger to actually help you. The disciples were tired. They asked Jesus in verse 12 to take the multitude away. Many of us are just like that when we pray. Lord, just take this situation away from me. I don't want to deal with it. Take the people away. Take the problem away. Why must I deal with it? Just take it away. When you do that, you're not realizing, just like the disciples, you're asking God to take away your blessing. I saw a depiction, I think it was on Facebook or something, and it told a story of a man who was carrying this heavy, long cross. And he had to travel a distance to get to the promised land. But because he felt the cross was too much for him to bear, he kept asking God, take it away. So what God did to make the cross lighter, he just kept chopping the cross down. He kept chopping the cross down. So now, the man gets to where the bridge is supposed to be, but the bridge has fallen. So now he's asking God for help. I can see the promised land, Lord. I can see flourishing. Why can't I get to it? Help me. God replied, you were supposed to use your cross to lay it across from one side to the other to be your bridge. The moral of the story is simply, in flourishing in Christ, it's often mixed in with your struggles. Don't pray away your miracle. I once heard a pastor say, everybody wants to see the walls of Jericho come down, but no one wants to be the ones to walk around the wall in obedience to God. Jesus says no to sending the multitudes away. So here we go again. The disciples say, okay, if you're not sending them away, send us away. That's just like some of us. All right, leave the fools here. Just send me somewhere else. Send us to the neighboring towns and countries to purchase food. Whatever it takes to get away. Once again, Jesus said no. The good news is that when the disciples said that they were tired, Jesus did not call them lazy. He did not send them away. No, instead, Jesus says, come away with me. If you're going to flourish in Christ, I'm on my last point. You must understand that what you have is enough. Verse 13, Jesus said to the disciples, you give them something to eat. 
But the disciples reply, we only have, we only have two fish and five loaves. It's always the enemy's tactic to have you think and feel that you are not enough or you don't have enough. You must believe that with the authority and the power that God has entrusted to you, it's all you need. David defeated Goliath with a few smooth stones that God had laid by the side of the river. God could have given him some center blocks. It was a giant. They had them old rubber pants there. Put them at the giant. He might have been able to give him a special sword. But all he gave him was five smooth stones. But the stones had representations. One stone was faith. The other stone was obedience. One stone was service. The other stone was prayer. And then there was a stone for praise which, of course, happened after he defeated Goliath. Moses had a walking staff of a shepherd. What do you have? Have you ever researched instead of complaining and murmuring, I don't have, I don't have, what do you have? Two fish and five loaves. Pretty much, we're looking at a happy meal. When you turn a happy meal over to God, and he puts his super on your natural, then you have more than enough. Case in point, the disciples fed the multitudes. And after they fed them, there was 12 baskets a food left over. So they got to take them home. The two fish and the five loaves were more than enough. By their obedience to God, the multitude became the blessers to the disciples standing all over the building. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you. You've done some things in your life that weren't favorable for blessing, and you counted yourself out. But all you need is to believe all over again. All you need is to look for your two fish and five loaves. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. I know the way looks dark sometimes. And you can't see your way out. But that's when you turn to God. Don't give up. He's going to keep on, as the praise and worship team reminded us. He's going to keep on making a way. He's never going to put you in something that he hasn't already given you an escape out of. It's a test. It's a test. And it's a test where you get to choose. The ministers are here this morning. If you're not sure of your next step, they are here to pray for you. If you need salvation, they are here to pray for you. Come be a part of this kingdom flourishing. It's everlasting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're flourishing. You're flourishing. And it doesn't just mean money. Some people just need their mind to get right. I 
Some people just need an escape. He won't let you go. Although you turned away, God is still with you. Tomorrow might be too late. Try God today. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you.
What a powerful word from our Deacon Tony. Flourishing in Christ. Glory to God. Thank you, Deacon Tony. Thank you for that word this morning. God's favor is able. Amen. God's going to place us in a favorable environment to flourish. Where we must understand our assignment. And we must not grow weary. We cannot become tired in doing well. Amen. And we must understand and know that what we have is enough. Amen. Let's put our hands together one more time for flourishing in Christ. Amen. What a powerful word. I'm going to take that word home with me today. Amen. Amen. If you would like to be a blessing to the man of God or sow a seed into this word, if you have not had the opportunity, please come forward and you can put your offering up here in the front. If not, if, you're, if we're all set, well, thank you. Thank you for your liberal giving today. Thank you for your liberal giving. Thank you for being a blessing to the man of God. What a great word. Hallelujah. We're all flourishing in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your liberal giving. Thank you for joining us today here at Kingdom Builders. We are going home together. Please stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I pray that God would cover you, that God would keep you, and he would mightily bless you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week, kingdom.